Welcome, it's indisputable. I'm your host Rashad Richard, good to be with you. We have a lot to cover today. In the bullpen, my debate segment, we are going to do something different. We are going to highlight the youth hunger strike that's taking place right now in DC because the current administration has not delivered on voting rights in America. We're gonna highlight those young people right here on Indisputable. Also breaking down news of the day, the big homie J.R. Jackson, senior producer TYT and host of the upcoming show, The Watch List. We're all very excited about the program. Top story of the day, seven year old child, seven year old special needs child was physically abused by her school teacher, by an administrator due to retaliation. That's the allegation, let me highlight the story. Let's put up a full picture. This young princess, her name is Amaria Clark. That's Amaria Clark in her home, a seven year old Florida girl has reported being bullied at school, saying her perpetrator was not another student, but her teacher. Her mother has hired a lawyer and plans to sue the school district after hearing about the teacher's alleged abuse and spotting bruises believed to be from the incident on her daughter's body. This story gets deeper. The teacher who is a white woman, her name, has been redacted from the police report obtained by the Miami New Times. This teacher has served the Miami-Dade County Public Schools for over 45 years. You have a 45 year educator here, okay? On September 29th, 2021, Amaria Clark, the young girl I just showed you, a former student, of the Air Base K through eight center school in Homestead, Florida, told her mother that her teacher impeded her from getting on the school bus by gripping her wrist so forcefully that it left a mark. Guess what? There are witnesses. There are witnesses to this abuse. Witnesses, including Clark's older brother, saw the teacher pull the little girl down the bus steps and publicly accused her of stealing a cell phone, okay? Ada Clark, that's the victim's mother, says she was made aware of the incident after the children came home. She said, when my child gets off the bus, other children were all around me telling me what happened. It didn't make sense. But by the time I got to Amaria, her arms told it all. Now, I want to pause at this moment to highlight a fact that has been unreported. Other school teachers saw the bruising on this child and said nothing. Nobody called the parent and said, we see bruising on your child. We need you to come to the school, we need to figure out what's going on. Nobody went to the seven year old and said, honey, what happened? What happened right here? Nobody. Other seven and eight year old children told the mother, what happened to her child? That's how she found out, okay? All right, uh, there's more to this story. Um, the mother took the girl to the children's hospital, which she is supposed to do. Um, took her to the urgent care unit and reported the assault to the Miami-Dade County Police Department. Did everything she was supposed to do as a responsible mother. In their report, the police write that they did observe red bruises on the child's hands and wrist also. So you have the story being corroborated by the local police department. They said, yes, there is actual bruising here. Williams also alleges in the lawsuit filed on behalf of the family that Amaria's 14th Amendment due process and equal protection claims have been violated. The teacher's actions were also a violation of the American with Disabilities Act, assault and battery, false imprisonment, displayed negligence and infliction of emotional and physical distress on a child. All true in my humble opinion. Then the school district gets involved. Now, what do you think the school district did? I mean, this is horrific. You have physical marks. 
you have multiple eyewitnesses, you have direct testimony of the seven year old child. What do you think the school system did? They defended the teacher, that's what they did. The school district released a statement saying the teacher did nothing wrong. What? These are serious allegations that were thoroughly investigated as soon as they were first reported. The investigation was concluded with a finding of no probable cause. Another attorney for the family, Frank Allen, says that no investigation has cleared the teacher. There was no clearing, attorney Allen rebutted. Once we get a chance to depose officials at the school, the teacher and some of these students, then we'll see if she's cleared. Clark described her adopted daughter as loving, sweet, and kind. She further noted that the girl who is also developmentally delayed is not an evil child or vicious child. Lawyers representing the family say the teacher's actions were in retaliation because earlier they told school officials about mistreatment in the classroom. All right, now here's what is happening with this story. You notice I didn't put a picture up of the mugshot of the teacher because there is none. Okay, there is none. Uh, the family, after doing exactly what they were supposed to do, documenting the incident with the police, taking the child to the hospital, filing an official complete, complete police report. Still, they have to go the extra step of getting the federal government involved, the federal courts involved, because locally the school system is trying to cover it up. But we are going to expose it today. J.R. Jackson, what are your thoughts about this? Very first thing, I read through this article and my blood pressure raised. I have a 10 year old son and he's been mm -hmm. through issues with teachers already. So this is a common thing. Um, and I was like, oh, seven year old girl was assaulted by her teacher who was upset about something that she didn't do, obviously. And if she had done it, still unwarranted, but right. put that aside. Um, a seven year old girl was assaulted by a teacher. And I was like, where is the police arrest part? Where's the, oh, not there. Okay, next article. No, no arrest. Okay, okay, so apparently she wasn't arrested. So I had to take that from the fact that I saw no one reported an arrest. And then I was like, oh, well, the parent. Is saying she's gonna sue. I said, sue and see her in jail. I'm trying to figure when this is gonna get to the point where it's criminal activity because that's exactly what it was. So, what is it about being anywhere near school grounds or a, a, a school bus that would allow them to think this is something that's just off of the charts of normalcy or normal when it's actually the furthest from that? I, I'm on the next door app at home. I see people talk about homelessness and how they're destroying our communities. And I can't believe that tents up across my street. And if you guys walk out there, beware, there's unhoused people that are assaulting people on the streets because they're not in their right mind, you guys, be careful. What do we have to say about a woman who's in charge of children and then she assaults one of them in front of others mm -hmm. on the spot in public? Are the police called immediately and do they show up and snatch her and throw her on the ground and put handcuffs in her and say, you're one of these outrageous off the wall people who's assaulting children that didn't know this was coming their way. Should they be watching their backs like the people on my next door app tell me to? Mm. Because she should, this is what happens. And then her thought, my last thought really fast before I finish, before my head gets hot here. She said that she stole a cell phone and this is apparently a retaliation. Because somewhere in these folks minds, they know if I accuse a black child of stealing something, I have a better opportunity for being believed because society in general believes the black folks steal things. No matter what, we don't have to, we don't have to ask any questions. We don't have to look and see if this make, it makes any sense. Let's just say it, because I know everyone will believe me. That's where yeah. she went with this. Yeah, I, I concur with everything you said. According to uh, the mother, there was no cell phone stolen. Uh, the child not. was uh, accused and, and it was uh, incorrect. But as you said, brother, even if a seven year old grabbed a cell phone, it does not warrant a physical assault that is so egregious, it literally leaves bruises and marks on the child. And remember, all of the children who saw it, those are the children who ended up telling the mother what happened to the seven year old daughter. Okay, all right, we're gonna continue to follow that story.
let me take you to Bronx. The Bronx DA is now dismissing 133 felony cases and will likely have to dismiss 500 more because of a corrupt ass cop. And as I have said before, corrupt cops cost you money, they cost you reputation, they cost you safety. Everybody should be on the same page as it relates to getting rid of corrupt police officers. Let me bring your attention to the Bronx DA and an NYPD detective. More than 130 convictions that relied on the testimony of former undercover NYPD detective Joseph Franco. Put up Joseph's picture, please. Joseph Franco were thrown out by a Bronx judge on Thursday. The latest in a wave of dismissals tied to this disgraced cop. Now, there's a lot of background to this story. Prosecutors have alleged that Franco lied in official records when he worked as an undercover narcotics detective in Manhattan in 2017 and 2018. Franco claimed that he had witnessed several drug deals, but video evidence later debunked all of it. Bronx Supreme Court Justice David Lewis granted the motion to drop the felony cases against 133 defendants who were indicted between 2011 to 2015, okay? Do you realize how even a misdemeanor charge would turn your life upside down? These are 133 felony convictions. These lives have been turned upside down, ripped from the inside out. Because of one man. Now we're going to focus on this one man because he's a horrible individual. But let's not forget that he exists in an ecosystem of criminal justice that allows him to operate this way with basic immunity. It was luck that he got caught. Luck, he had been doing this for years and would have been doing it today if it had not been for the video that provided contrary evidence to what he put down in writing. Franco, who was fired by the NYPD eventually in 2020, is awaiting trial in Manhattan on charges that he framed innocent people by lying about observing them dealing drugs. The Bronx District Attorney's Conviction Integrity Bureau launched a review of the ex-cops cases after he was indicted in April 2019 for perjury, official misconduct and other charges. Now, now I have to remind everyone the irony of a district attorney's office having a unit called the conviction integrity unit. The reason why they have the conviction integrity unit is because their convictions have historically lacked integrity. Understand why they have this unit or this bureau inside of their department. We did not want to dismiss, dismiss or vacate out of hand all cases he was involved in. We investigated those that hinged on his testimony and sworn statements. Bronx Court District Attorney Darcel Clark said in a statement, Franco's compromised credibility suggests a lack of due process in the prosecution of these defendants and we cannot stand behind these convictions. It also indicates a lack of due process as it relates to how in the hell y'all prosecute people. Because there's no way that this man should have gotten away with destroying this many lives. And there's more, at least 257, here's your, here's your next number. At least 257 Bronx convictions that depended on Franco's sworn statements and testimony before a grand jury have already been dismissed, already including 133 tossed on Thursday. Another 250 convictions are under review. Meaning the number of Bronx cases tied to this one man that end up getting dropped could hit 500 felony convictions in one damn jurisdiction. The DA's office said it could not provide details about the dismissed cases as they are now sealed. That's to cover their ass. Please understand why they're doing that. 
Dozens of convictions linked to the ex-cop have already been tossed in Manhattan and Brooklyn. So you have this jurisdiction, they are what we call a cooperating jurisdiction. You have this one narcotics officer. Do you not think anybody, do you think nobody knew this? Do you think no one was aware that this cop was dirty, planting evidence or whatever the hell else he was doing, lying on official reports? No, of course they knew, of course somebody knew. This is a culture that allows him to violate policy over and over again because culture eats policy alive any day of the week. Not only did he survive in that culture, he thrived in it. And it was only when his negligence and corruption was brought to the forefront of the masses. And that's why it's important that media, you're included in that because you have the power to You have the power to publish, it's called social media. Media in all forms is a great light to darkness. And darkness is a great coward. Darkness can't fight light, it never does. It flees when there's light. It doesn't give light any fight, but you have to expose it. You have to be willing to be the light in those dark places. And that's the reason why this cop has been exposed. But remember, if the George Floyd Policing and Accountability Act would have been law, guess what? There would have been a national federal database that would have shown you all the complaints on that particular cop or connected to that department. But we don't have that. That's too much transparency for the people we pay for. J.R. Jackson, thoughts? So this starts with as you mentioned accountability. So what is it that the police in this situation are looking to? You talked about the conviction and integrity unit, which exposes and points out that they know these things happen. And right. is this just this one crooked bad cop? Because they like to say, there's just one bad apple. So if there's just one bad apple that's, that's, that's responsible for this many cases that have to get thrown out, reviewed, looked over again, he's the only one, are we sure? And why should the citizenry care or think that he's the only one? So, okay, if we see this one cop that does these types of things, shouldn't the rest of society, at least either people who are policed by this particular department, shouldn't they assume that every cop will do this? If you think that's a crazy thing to assume, then think about their approach. If they see young minorities committing a crime, do you think that they assume, hey, I think another young minority will commit that same Mm -hmm. crime? In fact, if I see a young minority that looks anything like, that doesn't look anything like the one that we've seen commit a crime, We should assume that they will. We know that's how racism, we know that's how profiling works. And we know the police officers have been doing that since the beginning of policing. So, I mean, stop and frisk anybody, you know, in case we forgot that part. There's profiling that is done based off of how you look. Why can't the citizenry see this officer, see how you've admitted that he's done these things because you're taking back all these convictions that I'm sure they don't wanna have to take back. Shouldn't we assume that they all do it based off of the way that you approach policing us? Why can't it be the same way? But if we say, hey, we gotta change the culture, we have to defund, we have to change the way that we police in this country. They go, look at you, acting like the police officers are the bad guys. You act like the citizens are the bad guys. And in fact, you have the power of the gun and and handcuffs and jail behind you to do that. Um, And if this is not just in Bronx, really fast, uh, uh, doctor. In Torrance, California, Southern California, a suburb of LA, they had to throw out 1,800 cases. I'm sorry, they were reviewing 1,800 cases. They had to throw out hundreds other because there was text messages that were found between police officers talking about racism, yep. homophobia, uh, anti-Semitism, and posting pictures of hanging black men and saying, let's go hang with the homies. That's across the country. On the other ends of these two liberal bastions that I keep hearing conservatives talk about in policing and the way that they beat down and profile minorities. And then after they have to throw out all these convictions, are we gonna change anything? If they don't wanna change it, that means they're just trying to get us to shut up long enough for them to go back to work. That's right, well said brother, they would like us to kick the can down the road. They will bring back these practices. The system will excommunicate individuals that cause them problems. But it doesn't solve the cultural issue that we're trying to transform. I know we talk reform a lot. And I'm not as much as a reformist as it relates to policing. I'm a guy that says replacement. So while some talk reform, I talk replacement. But truly you need both working hand in glove in order to get this thing under control. All right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We got a lot of show left. Let me read some of these amazing comments. Before I get to those comments, let me remind everyone. 
I'm so excited about the watch list. J.R. Jackson, let's put let's put that graphic up and then we're gonna go to J.R. Uh, Monday, starting Monday, January 24th, join J.R. Jackson live weekdays, 12 p.m. Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific time for the watch list. That is a new 10 week test series on TYT. Here's what you're gonna find out, stories that you should be paying attention to in news, politics, culture, current events, sports, and more. He covers a lot more ground than I do, all right? Make sure you support JR by watching live daily, and don't forget to subscribe and follow at youtube.com forward slash watch list TYT and facebook.com forward slash watch list TYT. But to talk about it, JR is right here with me. Big brother, what should we expect? Um, well, we did the test runs this week. Today we had the most complete show with polit- literally politics, society, a little bit of sports too. It was it was it was excellent, and it's why I came here looking like a bit of a mess, as you guys. You look know. fine, brother. Um, this is it's this is going to be my style. A little bit laid back, a little bit serious, but we're definitely going to get to all the issues, everything that affects society, everything that you're going to see based off of what you see. We're going to run that video. We're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down in ways that no one else will. Awesome, man. We're looking forward to this, man. I'm really proud of you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. Um, we also got what we got. We got Ben Carollo. Yes. Brains <laughs> out of the world. <laughs> Galaxy brain. All right. Uh, make sure you tune in. That's a Twitch exclusive. Twitch.tv forward slash TYT. That's right after Indisputable. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I wish a Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a Sunday? You must feel free. Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Why are you mad? Well, you don't see me paying for my stuff? Who made you security? I hear confronting us. That's what made me security. Uh, there's a man paying for his purchase, okay? And he's doing the thing that we have all done. You know, you open up the bag, maybe you eat a grape or two from the grocery store. Uh, it's allowable, and I actually have the proof. This person does not work at the establishment. This person is not an employee, not management, not part of loss prevention. And she shows her ID that gives her the power to be the gummy police. Okay, let's put a picture of her ID up. What does her ID show? What does it really show? That she's a regular ass white woman. It's a regular ID. There, it is not a badge. It is not from loss prevention. It's just a regular ID that says, I'm a white woman who is empowered to police you from eating your gummies. Okay, obviously the man was not stealing. He did pay for his, um, for his item as he was in the process of doing. So here's how it works. According to fine law, an outlet that provides legal expertise, Eating food in a grocery store is not shoplifting. You need to have committed the act of taking the item and have intention of evading the checkout counter in order to be found guilty of shoplifting. That's according to the law. The outlet also clarifies that shopkeepers generally have discretion when detaining a shopper who they suspect to be shoplifting. And naturally, a regular customer in line does not have that authority. But the Karenicity runs deep here. JR, what are your thoughts? Uh, that was the first thing I was thinking. I said, man, this is, isn't this normal? My <laughs> eye back in the day, I was seven years old. My eye used to roll through the grocery store. I'm, I think more times than she didn't. The iced tea bottle was half drank before she got to the front. It's just what it was. <laughs> right. We're, we're growing up in St. Louis, <laughs> it's humid, and it was August, and it's 95 degrees with the humidity. She's gonna drink, she's in there to get the iced tea. And if the line is long, I'm gonna have some of my iced tea. And I'm still paying for it. And I was one of those kids who was thinking, oh man, because my mother told me this all the time. My, my parents were born in the mid 40s. So they were always saying, these are the things that people are assuming about you. And I took that as a kid to be like, let mm. me avoid doing those things so that I won't be caught up with 
store personnel and eventually police officers or anyone else. Cuz I was a kid that was worried about getting in trouble. I like to follow rules as a kid. I started changing that when I was later. But anyways, the, the the thing that happens is I was like, man, how can she do this? This is going to be a problem. Mom probably always told me, you know, it was it's down to don't stick your hands in your pockets. That's how basic it was. Yeah. This is normal. If you've never seen this happen, then you just haven't been going to grocery stores. She saw black folks doing it and she's thinking, oh man, they must be stealing gummy worms. Those trolley sweetened and soured gummy worms, I'm a candy connoisseur. Those cost no more than $2.59. So if he's stealing those gummy worms, I'm not sure what else she has to do with her day. But to try and corral $2.59 as the sales price, not the worth price. Those are the things that are probably worth 25 to 30 cents overall, if not less. She's looking to crowd that to save her favorite store $2.59 as the man is in line paying for it. So at what point did you think he was stealing? None of this makes any sense. None of it makes no. any sense. The other day at the store, I saw this older guy picking through the, you mentioned grapes. He picked through the grapes in the produce section, not in his shopping cart. Oh shopping no, cart. <laughs> that's a violation, damn it. That is what's now illegal. Put it in right? your cart, all right, we know it's yours. I don't have to worry about cross contamination on all of that, right? Uh, and let me be, let me keep it all the way 100, Jr. I don't give a damn if the man was stealing gummies. Who cares that much about? It? I, I don't care. I'm, I'm here okay. doing what I need to do for uh, the shopping needs of my household. All right. I've seen people stealing before, and I was like, this, this isn't my job. <laughs> right. All right. I got something for everybody. It's Friday. Guess what? Double dose. <laughs> You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a Sunday? I feel right. Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Both are mine. I gave her one. She said, go back to your country. She said, this is how it works. She needs to take one from me. Because that's her country, not my country. No, I said, go back to where that is the way it works. <laughs> Everyone around you heard did, you. Did Go I, back did to your I not offer to That's help you, you with said. loading it? Prior. I said thank you, right? I said no okay. need. I'm waiting for my dad to help me. Okay, real quick, are you videotaping this right now? Yes, I need to. Can video. you delete the video, please? No, no, no. Ma'am. No. I will refuse both if you don't delete the video. Hey, this is what you did to me, and I have the right to tape it. I didn't do anything to you. She's doing something bad to me. You? Call the police if the police ask me to delete it. I will. Otherwise, I cannot. However, I'm trying to resolve this for you. I'm asking you nicely to delete the video. That I you will keep the taking. videotape until the police there's message nothing, that I have to delete it. There's okay? nothing that you need the video for. There's no crime yes, being I committed. Do. Yes, I do. She is being very racist. Told me to go back to your country. I have the right to protect myself. What if she does something bad to me? I need to videotape it. Your well-being or life being threatened while you're in the store? Oh, so what she did? Yes, yeah, she was like, go back to your country. And she was told it? the people like that. Hey, it's not right to be you're, racist. You're awesome. And I have the full right to protect myself, take the video just in case she does something bad to me. She has not. I have more video. So here's what you have right now. You have a victim of racism. You have an individual who is a racist person. And then you have a protector of racism, the Lowe's employee who decided to defend this supremacist attitude toward a customer rather than check it, okay? He wanted to check the victim and then try to coerce the victim to delete footage. There's more, here it is. She has not yet, doesn't mean she will not. She wasn't coming back that direction. She took my stuff from my hand. So someone you might have grabbed the other one. Yeah, that's my dad. Okay, I'm just making sure. I was waiting for him to help me right. to load it. But she took my ma- stuff. Can I ask you a question? Are you hurt? Are you injured? My heart hurts. Your heart hurts? Yes, because she said go back to your country. It's not. It's nothing to you because you're white. It's your own country, right? And she said go back to your own country. We're, we're taking making it. this about a bigger issue towards me. Not, but I'm not going to towards refuse you. This from you. Not towards you. I'm asking you politely to delete the video. No. Unless I'm sorry, the, uh, I cannot help you at this point. Hey, unless the doc, uh, unless the policeman tell me to do so. Life is not being threatened. <laughs> you say it's, so. You say so. At what so. point was she threatening? She needs to apologize to me. Don't make it like a little deal. It's, it's a not racist a thing. Deal. You know, we've been studying Karens on this program for a while, and every time we learn a new 
uh, concept, we log it for the book that we will eventually publish about Karenicity. This is called the Karenicity handoff. Where the Karenicity first started with a customer and then the Karenicity was handed off to the employee who continued the Karenicity. Okay, um, let me give you some background to this. Quite fascinating what happened here, uh, but it is actually pretty normative. Uh, on Monday, January 17th, Juna Hu, a Chinese immigrant and Springfield resident, says she was shopping at the Lowe's store when a woman told her to go back to her country. Ms. Hu says she was trying to buy two fire pits, okay? She says she was waiting for a family to help lift the heavy products. When another store customer began to verbally attack her with racist remarks after Hugh would not give her one of the fire pits. So that's your privilege. Hey, how dare you buy two of these? I mean, I'm here to buy one myself, give me yours. And if you don't, go back to your country. Here's what's ironic, Ms. Hugh actually said, go ahead and have it. She actually told her, you can have it. And still, the Karen in this story, the first Karen decided, to utilize racial and racist language against her. In a statement, here's what Lowe said, all right? We are appalled to hear about this experience. At Lowe's, discrimination of any kind is unacceptable. We spoke to Ms. Hugh and apologized, letting her know we are taking swift action to address the matter. Our intent is to always ensure customers feel valued, respected, and welcomed. We are committed to creating a safe and open environment for all customers. Did you fire Karen number two though? Did you fire Karen number two? That's all I want to know. It's not too much you can do about the customer, maybe ban her from coming. But did you fire the guy who protected the culture that you say you have no tolerance for? Uh, JR, what are your thoughts? Uh, we talked earlier about how uh, crooked police officers finally get caught up specifically in the Bronx story. About how they get caught up because someone was recording. Someone mm-hmm. finally caught them on tape doing what they were doing. This goes back to 1991, 92 with Rodney King when it, that became a thing. So this is why this employee, the Karen number two, the handoff happened where he's like, wait a second, this is not about me. Can you take that video and delete it and get rid of it? Well, why would anyone do that? What does that have to do with what happened? Yep. So if anything, if you think that the woman that you're protecting was in the up and up for her approach and her lying about, by the way, she was lying about what she said to her about going back to your own country. If you're looking to defend her and now you're the one that's on camera, you know, it became about him. Yep. He said, well, I mean, if this is gonna be an grievance about me, then we're gonna have to ask you to leave. That's the basis for why she should leave, who was a paying customer looking to buy two of your dirty little barbecue pits, <laughs> buying two of them. So you're gonna take a paying customer and kick her out because she's recording someone else who's berating her. I want you to try to understand the reality. And I know this happens all the time, so it's an easy thing to do, flip the script. So there is this minority who's harassing this poor white woman who's trying to buy two barbecue pits because she's got family coming into town and we have to, we have a big backyard. We're gonna, we're gonna cook the vegan stuff here. And we're gonna cook the meat stuff here. And then someone says, give me that because I want one too. Mm-hmm. Do we really think that employee would stand in front of them and go, I need you to delete that footage and make sure that, uh, and if you don't, I'm try- he said, I'm trying to resolve the situation. What resolution comes from that? The resolution comes from that is that someone uh, gets off from the, 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 the grieving things that they're doing. Uh, last part about this, um, may, I hope you weren't gonna get to this, but the state representative out there in, in Illinois, yeah. she put together an online petition. That's what the employee was trying to avoid. Big word, accountability. That's what Mm -hmm. he's trying to avoid. Very well said. All right, we got more on the other side is indisputable, stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We have a lot of viewer comments. I will read as many as I can. Uh, TYT member Colorado Blue Blazer regular says she is white, she exudes power. She is white power embodied. Really on? Real on? My apologies if I said it wrong. Uh, badges, you want badges? Crystal Towns, uh, Townsend says, was that a Karen membership badge? I think it was. <laughs> I think it was actually a certified Karen membership badge. Uh, Mini 2022, I guess. Hell no, she's the dang victim. That's right, Hank the Patriot 
Lowe's dude think he's a First Amendment lawyer. Yeah. Uh, Twitch, <laughs> JR's caution tape, um, perpetual cold. Oh, cool. I'm not the only person with a roll of caution tape on hand. <laughs> What's the caution tape for, JR? Are you on mute? I, I'm, I'm, I'm in Studio B. And there's a couple props here, and they've done many different sets. That wasn't me, but I'll take it home. I mean, if I may need it, I'm yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, and don't forget, make sure you tune into the watch list, JR. Plug it one more time for everybody. Yes, the watch list, everyone. We kick off live uh, TYT programming every weekday, 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific, 12 noon on the East. We're going to go through some videos. We're going to have fun. We're going to analyze. We're going to talk about everything that you're going to be watching. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. Looking forward to it, man. All right, we have an update. Remember the cop in Georgia who decided to basically write something that was wholly racist and insanely insensitive. He said that criminal arbory still got the death penalty though. Remember that guy? Okay, so here's the update. He did not get fired. Remember they were saying he's going to be fired uh, this is not going to stand in this department. He was in violation of our whatever. Still didn't get fired. All that hurrah, and they did not fire him. Let me give you the background and the update. Houston, excuse me, Houston. It's spelled like Houston, but it's Houston County, Georgia. Houston County Sheriff's Deputy. Let's put up his picture. Paul. Erhan was allowed to resign one week after being suspended for making a derogatory remark on social media about the death of Ahmad Aubrey. Let's put up the social media post. Those are the killers of the young Ahmad Aubrey. They had due process, Ahmad Aubrey had none. They had their constitutional rights respected, Ahmad Aubrey did not. They were convicted by a jury of their peers. Justice was served, at least to the degree that justice can be served when there's a murder. Well, let's put it back up. So this deputy sheriff decided to write that criminal Aubrey still got the death penalty though. Now this is at the time, an active cop, right? An active on duty sheriff's deputy who referred to Ahmaud Arbery, the victim of a crime, as a criminal, okay? Which means he believes the white men who committed murder are probably heroes, you know, like Kyle Rittenhouse, okay? Erhan was effectively given a slap on the wrist and allowed to keep his job in the interim despite his off color response to a Facebook post announcing the lifetime prison sentences for the three white men convicted of murdering Mr. Arbery. Erhan was not immediately fired. Instead, the 20 year veteran of the Houston County Sheriff's Office was suspended on January 10th. We brought you that as it developed, okay? Erhan was then given 10 days to appeal his suspension. If he did not, he would have been fired on Thursday. But before that privilege grace period expired, the Houston County Sheriff's Office announced Wednesday via its Facebook page that Ur Erhan chose not to appeal the decision and has resigned. Resigned? Here's the impact. Erhan's letter of resignation claimed, and I quote, that he was Exercising my constitutional right to free speech. When a very unfortunate series of events occurred, he added that the manner in which they were handled prompted him to resign because it was something he could not support. In that context, Erhan added, continuing to work for the Houston County Sheriff's Office would be against who I am and what I support. Now, the last time I covered this, okay, I actually brought to your attention the employee handbook that all deputies had to sign. And in the employee handbook, 
it speaks specifically to comments made on record or on duty and off duty that brings a reputation issue to the department. That officers or deputies in the sheriff's department, they must maintain credibility. That's exactly the wording in the handbook that he signed. Yes, the sheriff's office has the ability to enforce that contract that you signed as an employee. Here's what I don't get. I do get it, but I don't like it. This happened and initially everybody was on the same page. This cop has to go. Even the sheriff came out, now what he did was wrong. And he indicated he was going to fire the guy. And then he allows him to resign. He allows him to resign. This is why people don't like the police. You don't get away with doing things like this at any other workplace and have all of these protections and privileges and 99% of the people who are speaking out about it disagree with what you did and you still get to resign after violating the rules that you agreed to follow. And then in your resignation, you still are unapologetic for what you did, what you said, how you made a reputation crisis happen for the uniform you say you believe in, you're corrupt. And I know good and damn well, more should happen to you other than a resignation. Really firing would not have been enough. You have shown your true colors, deputy. You have shown your true colors. And the reality is they should be looking at your previous arrest. The testimonies that you have given to land others in jail. They should be looking at your record, but they're not. JR, what are your thoughts? Not only was he allowed to resign, he was allowed to resign with this anger and with this, this righteousness that the police Officers, this police department did him wrong by forcing him to do this. So not only that, he's leaving with this, I'm high and mighty. And in fact, allows him to maybe get a job somewhere else. We know that many officers that are actually fired from time to time, they can just go across county lines, go to the next town over, have a new job. Hey, yeah, you know, I resigned over there just because, you know, I wasn't I wasn't able to practice my free speech. You should hire me here because I'm a veteran of the police force. So that's number one. Number two, he took to Facebook or wherever he went to write this. Because um, he's looking to impress certain people. Now, the point of the police department is to protect and serve the community, right? Which community is he looking to serve? Which community is he looking to get some kind of validation from? What type of cloud is he trying to build with which community? If it's with the community at large and if it's with the people that he's uh, 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 accusing of uh, or, or at least downgrading their existence of by saying that criminal Ahmad Arbery, just good thing he's dead. Do you think he cares about the community? that relates to Ahmed Arbery? Do you think he cares about whether or not they go, I hope I don't run into that guy when I'm driving down the street? Because I know how he feels about us right now. Yep. I know that he already thinks someone who is obviously not a criminal and has been murdered is actually a criminal. So he put this on social media to get the support of his community. This is the community that officers like this work for. They work to please the racists of the community. They work to please the fellow officers of the community that like to harass certain folks because they think they're ridding the streets of the folks they don't like. These are the people that they're serving. And they go to the to the extent yeah. of going on their Facebook pages to write about it. That's how important this is to them. But they're not willing to monitor what they're saying on their Facebook pages before they say it. This is an important job. Every officer in this, in this department should be monitoring everything they say on every social media account by the department if the department cares about whether or not they're gonna have repeat offenders like this. But they don't care, they just don't care because the community yeah, yeah. is not who they're serving. That's right, very well said. You know, we appreciate our allies who stand up against extreme Karenicity, anti-Karens, Antica, Unite. You scream at an employee's Walmart. Get out of here. That's racist. Yes, it is. No, it's not. The United States doesn't have an official language, jackass. Where do, where do kids get this barbaric?
information from that. You can come in my community and talk to our cats like that. You saw that was an anti-Karen confronting a Karen about being aggressive, rude, disrespectful to a child, to a child. Now this also highlights the realization that's happening across all over, uh, across America all over and that's gentrification, right? And he highlights this, okay? She said, I, I give money to your community. I mean, she said it to him, I mean, how dare you? Tell this white woman who gives you charity that she can't talk to black children the way she chooses. He was obviously correct in his assessment. No, ma'am, this is our backyard, this is our community. You will not disrespect children in this community. Big ups to that guy. JR, thoughts? I, maybe I'm dating myself here, but as soon as I heard the, yeah, I spent money in your community, and you know, I'm always done something here. It's the color purple. Remember uh, Miss Millie? Yeah. I've always been good to you people. I've always been good to you people. So that's your excuse for why you're not being good to you people right now? Because <laughs> you spent some money in the community. The community that now you're involved in, and as you uh, try to push out the people of that community, so the money goes in. And the people go out. Now, if you want to explain how that works is you put the money in by spending all that, but then you start attacking the children of it. And then eventually, if you see a teenager walking down the street doing something you don't like, then the cops get called on that kid. Maybe mm -hmm. that kid gets hemmed up. Maybe that kid gets arrested. Maybe that kid gets shot and killed by the cops. That's eliminating the people of that community while you walk in and take their place because you're spending money in the community. Oh, But I've always been so good to you guys. Is that looking very good to you right now? Your money is not what what Anybody asked for, nobody yeah. needs you here to spend your money. What we need is to, to be allowed to build the community back up, to have opportunities so the community is what it is. I don't even know what, what, what the situation is in this particular community, but whichever one it is, she's now inserted herself and she sees herself as I'm the good one. I'm just trying to make you better because somehow you know better. Why is that the automatic response? And think about and, if you really believe that. And I really appreciate the young man, the brother for saying, this is not about money, this is about character. Uh, and I thought that was really the drop mic moment in that back and forth. That this, this whole conversation is happening because I'm telling you that your character, the display of your character will not be tolerated here, okay? All right, my dear brother, looking forward uh, to the show. Tell people how they can check you out and follow you. Yeah, absolutely. JR Jackson on all of the socials. It's the watch list. You can watch it. Uh, YouTube.com slash watch list TYT. We're going to do on all of the platforms. You're going to make it happen. We'll see us on uh, the Young Turks as well. We just still do, but still Fridays. I still come on TYT and do those second hours. Not today, a little bit busy. I'll be back next Friday. But I will see you guys on Monday, the launch of the watch list, Monday, January 24th, a day before my birthday. This is going to be a good week. It's going to be a great week. Happy early birthday is going to be a huge success. Very proud of you, brother. Uh, and you know we're always here, man, open door, you know that. Absolutely, I appreciate you. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember the truth is always indisputable.